What up, young blood? I'm Leon, the paperback maniac, here with another vintage horror book review. Today, we are looking at the inaptly named Joyride by Stephen Cry. This book was published by Pinnacle in 1983. And while I will say that the name is not the most suitable for this book, uh, that cover art certainly is. Definitely uh, gives you an impression of what's in store. And uh, unlike a lot of uh, cover art of this period, uh, that is a scene uh, straight from the book. So uh, yeah, I will go ahead and read the synopsis from the back cover. He waits, he watches, he kills. Nine teenagers enter an abandoned cemetery to celebrate their high school graduation. Before the night is over, most of them will die. Joyride, the ultimate terror trip. More horrifying than Halloween, more grisly than Friday the 13th. So uh, right off the bat there, you see uh, what kinds of... Um, entertainments this book is sort of comparing itself to, right? Halloween, Friday the 13th. And um, this book wastes no time getting started. Uh, right in the prologue, we are introduced to our first scene of carnage uh, involving a poor dachshund who slips uh, under the gates of the All Saints Hill Cemetery uh, to try to catch a pigeon and unfortunately comes into contact with the unhinged, deranged cemetery gatekeeper a man known as Cleats because of the steel-cleated, mud-encrusted boots that he always wears. Uh, and, you know, Cleats in this scene, unfortunately, has a lead pipe. And I will say right now, animal lovers or uh, anyone who is sensitive to animal violence in books, uh, film, whatever, you're probably not going to make it past the prologue because it is pretty gruesome. Um... Well, shortly thereafter, we are introduced to our nine archetypal teenagers who are driving around in two separate cars on the eve of their high school graduation uh, looking for a place to party, you know? They want to find a place where they can just park, hang out, drink beer, smoke some weed, uh, get it on with their, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends. And uh, they come across the uh, All Saints Hill Cemetery, and they think, oh, Looks like the perfect place to party, you know, never mind that uh, it's, there's no trespassing signs all over the place. It's, it's apparently, you know, closed to the public, but you know, that's part of the charm. They go in there and, you know, these kids are your uh, archetypal uh, sort of slasher teenagers. Uh, you, you know, one of the kids even drives a red Mustang convertible, just classic. Uh, we've got the requisite fat kid, uh, aptly nicknamed Twinkie. Uh, whom, whom the author uh, hilariously reminds the reader is obese uh, on nearly any every occasion. Uh, you know, the, the, the guy can't do anything without a descriptor being added, like um, his rotund belly jiggled, or uh, like he slid his corpulent frame off the hood of the car. <laughs> it's just like kind of funny. And you know, this kid, this fat kid, he's like always like, he's got an arsenal of snacks and he's always munching on something. And he's repeatedly being uh, made fun of for being fat because this is the 80s, uh, especially by the girls in the group. And um, you know, we've got the slutty girl, we've got the conscientious girl, we've got the, the stud whose biggest priority is how he's gonna seal the deal with his girlfriend. You know, that kind of that kind of thing. So these guys come into contact, of course, with Cleats, this unhinged and hideously disfigured cemetery gatekeeper who uh, sees one of the girls and mistakenly uh, believes that she is the woman from his high school eight years ago before his terrible accident, the girl whom he was in love with, right? And he thinks that it's the same woman the same girl, and he resolves to get her. Of course, in his unhinged state, he thinks that all the other kids, all of that girl's friends, are the teenagers who taunted and tortured him when he was uh, you know, a student eight years ago. And he thinks it's time for payback, you know? And this guy, this cleats, he's got a tool shed uh, near the gatehouse uh, filled with an arsenal of equipment and tools. I mean, this guy's got, uh, you know, uh, hatchets, axes, picks, shovels, hoes. He's got like a power, like hedge trimmer. 
He's got like a chainsaw. He's got anything uh, you can imagine, any sort of slasher type weapon he has, and he's he's ready to use. Now the book has a quite interesting and effective structure. It basically alternates between the present uh, time, which is this night where the teenagers are, you know, they, they become kind of trapped there, you know, because he he does chain the the gates and uh, they're they're stuck there overnight as he takes them out one by one. Uh, and then it alternates to the past eight years earlier and we get a little backstory on Cleats and sort of learn what happened to uh, so horribly disfigure his face and you know make him just become this deranged murderous hermit who, who just stays alone in the cemetery gatehouse. And you know, it's pretty interesting. We, we learn about his past. He had kind of a, a sad past. His, his father uh, was the cemetery uh, gatekeeper, uh, this curmudgeonly uh, old man whom he was taking care of because he was, you know, he, he was infirm. He, actually, he was in a wheelchair. And, um, you know, uh, Cleats was a normal kid, kind of gangly, kind of awkward, um, but, you know, sensitive. But basically a misfit in school, kind of a loner. He wanted to get away from the cemetery and his father, but he couldn't escape the clutches of the old man and so you know one day the the rage boils uh to the breaking point to the you know reaches that that uh critical mass where um you know the father had an accident and kind of uh, took a spill down the stairs in his wheelchair and so then you know cleats the, the teenager he's he's um according to the courts you know they think that he is uh, being taken care of by the like this some person that works at the cemetery when in reality he's on his own and but you know he's still going to school and he loves this girl this girl Carla uh, of course you know in typical uh, horror book or you know slasher uh, ways he is head over heels in love with with this hot always blonde is it which is kind of funny there they were always like these hot blonde girls completely out of his league of course and of course a girl who is dating uh, a, a cruel jock who constantly taunts and bullies uh cleats the the well he wasn't known as cleats then he had like a regular name um so you know we get this backstory and and you know and eventually it does build, we, we slowly go back and back in time until we get the full exposition and we learn what happened to him, uh, a terrible accident, uh, which has caused, you know, his face, basically, you know, really cool descriptions, actually, of, of uh, Cleats' physical uh, disfigurement, you know, basically, like his nose and mouth were uh, blasted away and they're just nothing now but just like mangled scar tissue and and causes him to to breathe with kind of this hideous wheezing slurping sound so like you can hear him like coming you when you hear this like slurping sound it's like his his raggedy ass breathing through his like fucking mangled mouth it's it's uh disgusting but it's pretty awesome uh so yeah so we go back and forth and that's basically uh, your book right there. That's your plot. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, if you're familiar with, you know, slasher movie conventions, um, you know, this is not going to be anything new. However, uh, I must say that this book is fun as hail, capital H-A-I-L. This book was a blast. This book is really fun. Uh, you know, we've got a great summer setting uh, and a cool just setting in general. This this cemetery. You know, of course, it starts raining. It's like a, there's like a thunderstorm. There's mist. You know, the ambiance is set. You know, we've got this you know cast of you know archetypal characters. A really cool villain. You know, Cleats. I gotta say, it's a damn shame that they never adapted this into a movie back in the '80s because you know Tom Savini would have had a hell of a time with the makeup on this guy, just looking so hideous. Uh, and you know this huge hulking, skulking figure who just kind of you know like moves through the shadows of the cemetery with this arsenal of weapons in his tool shed. Really cool vi uh, villain. You know. Just amazing death scenes. In the beginning, you know, there aren't so many. And then, it, like, you'd think with such a large cast of characters, you know, the deaths don't all happen straight away. But 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 it is paced well enough that you know, eventually, um, you know, these guys, these teenagers do get what's, uh, you know, what's coming to them. Although, I have to say, the teenagers were not all bad. I mean, there were, there was some uh, slight attempts at characterization, such as, 
there's like one scene where one of the guys is asking his friend why why his girlfriend doesn't like him and then the the, the guy is saying well it's because you are um you know you're too eager to please like you want everyone to like you and you're sucking up all the time and people see through that and uh, i'm thinking like oh, i knew people like that <laughs> that's pretty good you know like so you know some attempts at characterization of course nothing deep uh, this book does not beat any drum. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no message here. It's just a straight, fun, violent, uber gory uh, slasher. So, um, yeah, I, I will have to give this my recommendation. I mean, if you, if you enjoy slashers and you like reading, you've, you've got to track this book down and read it. I mean, hell, even if you don't enjoy slashers, if, if you're just a casual fan, you've got to, you know, seek this book and read it. I wish, actually, I could give this book to, you know, some people I know who think reading is just kind of just boring and, and dumb and a waste of time. In fact, I wish I could give this book to a couple of my students. I know some middle schoolers who think reading is a waste of time. If only they could read this book. Although, sadly, if I did that, I would most assuredly be fired. Um, so they would have to find this on their own. Maybe one day they'll, they'll come across this video in the future and uh, give it a shot and be like, damn, that was a crazy book, you know. So yes, Joyride by Stephen Cry gets my high recommendation. Um, yeah, so go ahead, you know, try to find it. It's pretty rare. Unfortunately, Stephen Cry never uh, wrote anything else, at least under that name, uh, which is a damn shame because I would love to read uh, what else he's written. Actually, very sol <clears throat> solid writing. I would say the writing in this thing is uh, definitely a notch above. Very descriptive. Uh, sometimes, you know, like the imagery could, could at times be, you know, almost nauseating, but but artfully done. In fact, if you stuck around, let me, I will go ahead and read. You know, I'm a big fan. One thing I love about these paperbacks, I'm a huge fan of the sort of like prose excerpt ad that they put in the front to sell the book. It's essentially the trailer for the book, right? Like if it's assuming you're at the grocery store rack, you open up the book, hopefully you're struck by the cover and you open it up to that and just get a flavor for what the book is. So, okay, I'm gonna read this just as a parting before this video is over. Okay, and also charming is in between each of the paragraphs, it's a, it has like this uh, caption. It says, keep repeating, it's only a book. It's only a book. It's only a book. Prepare yourself for Joyride. It's just like, that is like straight ripped off from like, I don't even remember at the moment what 70s horror movie it is, but it's the poster. It literally was like, just keep repeating. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. It might have been Last House on the Left. Anyway, okay, let, let's read the pro snippet. These are three like excerpts taken from different parts of the book, but just to give you like an idea. His nose was a grotesque a mass of boneless, scarred flesh that had been sewn against his face to reveal the gaping holes of his nostrils. Loose pieces of skin flapped as he breathed. His mouth was an abomination, a tangled web of crimson scar tissue that frothed a bubbly white foam. His long, conic fingers twitched nervously as he studied the arsenal of tools that hung from the pegboard-lined wall. The back of his head crooked left, right, left, right, like the pendulum of a clock as he debated between the sickle, the pitchfork, and the pickaxe. Finally, pushing the top of his brown tweed hat down tightly against the crown of his head with one hand, he reached out with the other and ripped the long-handled pickaxe, uh, pickaxe with its shimmering stainless steel blade and long pointed spike off the wall. The blade cut deep into his skull, splitting it down the center like a ripe melon. His head exploded in halves over his shoulders, spilling to the ground in a hail of splintered bone, soft pink tissue, and a torrent of gushing blood. So there you go. Uh, those three paragraphs, as I said, were are taking out of you know context, but just, just to give you an idea of the kind of uh, imagery and the kind of uh, content in this book. So yeah, Joyride by Stephen Cry. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, thanks for watching as always. I will see you later. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna be back with another review uh, pretty soon and another um, collection video. Till then, take it easy guys. Peace out.